And Senator, you just heard from the Republican candidate who's endorsed by Donald Trump uh, and hopes to be on that ticket uh, running against you in November. Uh, I'm not sure he knows that the president of the United States is Catholic, but uh, what, what is your response uh, to what you just heard? I, I watched the debate. I'm now in Connie Schultz in some study where I do this from in our home in Cleveland, my wife's study, and she knows Lawrence. So I watched downstairs. I watched the debate. It was, I mean, that was one part of it that was a little peculiar, but I watched three rich guys, three millionaires who have spent already combined more than $25 million to, shall we say, win the Senate seat. Uh, no mention of the cost of prescription drugs, no mention of manufacturing jobs, no mention of the dignity of work. Uh, no mention of pensions or veterans, no mention really of how to secure the border uh, while the House of Representatives adjourned when we passed with 70 votes, um, support for Ukraine and Israel, all of those things. So um, it was a sort of vapid debate that they made uh, back and forth. The, the one substantive thing that they did say is that they all stand with uh, national abortion ban, even though Ohio voters, as, though, as I've said on this show, and we did an interview back then, Lawrence, Ohio voters by 13 points said they want reproductive rights uh, for Ohio. And so um, the debate didn't surprise me, but didn't really deal with issues that affect Ohioans every day. Well, you're going to be facing one of them uh, in November. Uh, and, and again, let, let's listen to more from the, the already Trump-endorsed uh, candidate, uh, Bernie Moreno. Let's listen to something else he said. We sent an outsider to Washington, D.C. in 2016. Fundamentally changed this country and put us on a path to prosperity. We sent a perpetual career politician to Washington, D.C. in 2021 with Joe Biden. I'm asking you to do the same thing you did in 2016. Vote for the outsider. We have enough career politicians that all they want is a job. Senator, what's your response to that? Well, I... I... I don't even know quite how to answer that. Ultimately, what none of these candidates, and I, I don't see much difference among them, none of these candidates really understand that politics is about going around the state, listening to voters, whether it's the, the roundtables I've done, roundtables in 41, I think, counties on the PACT Act. I've been to East Palestine eight times and listened to what do you want government to do to help you keep the to help keep the railroads responsive to accountable for what they do. They're not they came out essentially they all came out against the minimum wage. Um, they're not listening to workers. They're not listening to communities. And to me, it's about that. And then you know, we do. And I work with Senator Chester in the PACT Act. I work to save people's pensions. A million, I'm sorry, 100,000 Ohio union members had their pension saved. And I could spend a whole hour on the show telling stories about people that came up to me, including a grandfather in my church. He was a visitor as his grandson was being baptized. And he took me beside after church. And I mean, these stories are really what what makes this job so great? Stories about saving pensions, stories about the child tax credit, stories about they're getting support from the VA because they were exposed to these football field sized burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know from your time in the Finance Committee, Lawrence, and all that all that you did in that committee uh, when you heard those stories about people that got a break in their lives and helped them join the middle class, helped them stay out of poverty, helped them with their Medicare or Medicaid. That's what I live for in this, and that's the stories you get when you travel the state. If you listen first and deliver on on promises, or at least you would, you you say you will try, and then you deliver. And there's there's no feeling quite like that in public office. What about uh, the people of East Palestine uh, and people in Ohio who have every right now to fear what can happen in a train derailment? What did they hear in tonight's debate about how Republicans will protect them from train derailments like that? Well, they heard nothing. I'm not sure any of them have been to East Palestine. I don't know that. As I said, I've been eight times. I, I do know they kept bragging about deregulation, uh, cutting back on rules, when in fact, uh, the, what happened in East Palestine is sort of this Wall Street business model. Um, you you, um, uh, you uh, lay people off. Uh, you then compromise, then you take stock buybacks and bigger dividends. Uh, executives do very well. You then compromise on public safety or public health in something like East Palestine happens. But all they say is tax cuts for the rich, 
and more and weaker regulations on uh, to support unions or weaker regulations in public health. I mean, look what we did to bring the cost of, of, of insulin down. Look what we did so that seniors keep don't have to pay out of pocket so many thousands of dollars. And um, that's what this job's about. It's not just um, kind of up here that we don't want women to have abortions and we don't want this and we don't want that and we want to serve our corporate friends. And you've had me on this show before and you've always said, how do you win a state like Ohio? You win in Ohio by standing up to Wall Street street, holding them accountable, standing up to the railroad, standing up to the drug companies, standing up the oil companies. And that's why, you know, that's that's why they're trying to beat me. And that's why I know I depend on literally hundreds of thousands of people around the country to to come to SheridBrown.com and help me because they're going to outspend me. Uh, they always do. But I got a whole lot more people on my side. And that's that's what wins elections like this.